Get ready. Get set. And hold on. It's going to be one heck of a ride. It's time for the Mouth of Matushak Show with me, your host, Paul Gregory Matushak. On this Monday, July 28th, 2014. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the new week. Get energized, get set, get out there, be productive, be happy, go and pursue your happiness. If you're one of the uh, Americans that's lucky enough to have a decent job, go and enjoy it. And if you're one of those who has a uh, unique opportunity to find a better career or a life path, get up, get energized, get some good coffee, break out those swan ads, go on your LinkedIn account and go and straighten it up and get your new resume out there and get charged, get energized. It's a great week, guys. Great new start. That's a great thing about, you know, new weeks, new months, new days, is you get to wake up and start fresh, so to speak. Everything's out in front of you because you can't do anything about the past. It's set in stone. You've done it. You've written it. But the future's wide open. So, with that in mind and that great week ahead of us, I have a short clip that uh, I know some of you listeners say every time you have a clip, it seems like it doesn't work. Well, right now we're about 50-50. So, I do have one queued up, and hopefully it'll play for you guys. I haven't been able to hear the whole thing myself, so we'll keep our fingers crossed and make sure it's, it's still kind of PG rated here. But uh, something to start the week off with, with a little bit of uh, fun. Those of you who are right of center leaning may enjoy this. And those of you who are left of center leaning, well, I'm just going to put it this way. Sometimes the best humor is when we can sit, look in the mirror, and point our fingers at the mirror and laugh at ourselves. But uh, this comes from Dan... uh, Ooh, I almost said Dan Patrick. That would be a no-no. This, um, I actually have to review um, where I got this from. But anyway, I'll uh, I'll give the attribution afterwards. Just real quick while you guys uh, are listening, I'll, I'll double check. Um, oh, Dan Joseph. I don't need to go and look that up. I remember him. Anyway, Dan Joseph did this... Uh, put this little video up on his uh, YouTube site. It's 20 jokes about Democrats in five minutes. So let's have a little bit of a laugh. Like I said, if you're on the left, laugh about yourself. And if you're on the right, well, laugh about them. I'm sure they there's plenty that comes the other direction anyway, especially with Jon Stewart and uh, what's his name? Uh, Mayor or Bill Maher. He pronounces it Mayor. Uh, loves to uh, make jokes and uh, make try to make them sound like they're facts, too. And usually he's way out in left field and needs to go and do some research before he opens his mouth. But it's funny when you realize that he's not exactly accurate in what he's portraying. But anyway, you know, we can laugh at ourselves. So laugh at yourself or laugh at the opposition. Either way, let's have a laugh. It's about a little bit over six minutes here. Great start to a Monday morning show. Again, that's Dan Joseph. Howdy, Space Rangers. I'm Dan Joseph. You know, there's a lot of crap going on in the world, and most of it's terrible. Well, today I wanted to lighten things up a little bit. Instead of going on one of my rants, today I'm going to tell some jokes. But all these jokes are going to be about liberals and Democrats. So if you're a Democrat and you don't want to watch this, maybe you should take this time to go out and, I don't know, buy some organic seaweed or whatever it is you do when you're not bashing America. So now, without further ado, allow me to present... 20 jokes about Democrats in five minutes. And go. Nixon, Clinton, and Obama die and go to heaven. God is in a chair judging them. Nixon says, I'm sorry I lied. Clinton says, I'm sorry I cheated on my wife. Obama says, hey, 
Get out of my chair. Valerie Jarrett walks up to Obama. Mr. President, the nation is under attack and the stock market is collapsing. Obama looks at her and says, Damn it, Valerie. I told you to stop interrupting me when I'm putting. How many Democrats does it take to change a light bulb? Two. One to assure the public that everything possible is being done, while the other screws it into a water faucet. A doctor, President Obama, a priest, and a Boy Scout are on a plane and the plane is crashing. But there are only three parachutes left. The doctor grabs one and says, I am a doctor. I save lives, so I deserve to live and jumps out. Then Obama says, I'm the president and I'm the smartest man in the world, so I deserve to live. And he jumps out. Now the priest looks at the Boy Scout and says, my son, I've lived a long life and you have your whole life ahead of you, so you take the parachute. The Boy Scout hands the parachute back to the priest and says, no worries, father, the smartest man in the world just took off with my backpack. Why don't they let members of Occupy Wall Street swim in the ocean? Because they can't get the smell out of the tuna. A man died and went to heaven. As he stood in front of St. Peter at the pearly gates, he saw a huge wall of clocks behind him. The man asked, what are all those clocks? St. Peter answered, those are lie clocks. Everyone on earth has a lie clock. Every time you lie, the hands of your clock will move. Oh, said the man. Well, whose clock is that? Well, that's the Pope's clock. The hands have never moved, indicating that he never told a lie. Incredible. What about that one? That's Abraham Lincoln's clock. The hands have moved twice, telling us that Abe only told two lies in his entire life. Wow. So where's Obama's clock? His clock is in Jesus' office. He's using it as a ceiling fan. John Kerry walks into a bar. Bartender says, why the long face? So Obama walks into a bank and says to the teller, good morning. Could you cash this check for me? The teller says, my pleasure, sir. Could you please show me your ID? Obama says, oh, sorry. I didn't think I needed to bring it with me. After all, I am the president. The teller tells him, yes, sir, I know who you are, but with all the government regulations, I need that ID. But look, this is what we can do. One day, Tiger Woods came into this bank without ID. To prove he was Tiger Woods, he pulled out his putting iron and made a beautiful shot across the bank lobby into a cup. With that shot, we knew him to be Tiger Woods and we cashed his check. So what can you do to prove that it's you and only you. Obama stands there thinking and thinking and finally says, honestly, nothing comes to mind. I can't think of a single thing I can do. The teller turns to him and says, great. Will that be large or small bills, Mr. President? How do you know your health insurance has been switched to Obamacare? Your new doctor treats your erectile dysfunction by giving you a popsicle stick and a roll of duct tape. Why does Bill Clinton wear boxers? To keep his ankles warm. Duh. During his presidency, one of Bill Clinton's aides came up to him and said, there's someone on the phone who wants to know what you plan on doing about the abortion bill, Mr. President. Bill Clinton said, oh, another one? Oh, I'll just go ahead and pay it. During the Obamacare debate, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid was asked if he felt he had the votes to pass the Senate's proposed health care reform bill. Reid replied, like my friend Ted Kennedy would have said, we'll drive off that bridge when we come to it. Harry Reid dies and gets sent to hell. He's really surprised when the devil opens the door to a beautiful pink room with Kate Upton inside. Then the devil says, Kate Upton, this is your eternal punishment. Little David was in his fifth grade class when the teacher asked the children what their fathers did for a living. All the typical answers came up. Fireman, policeman, salesman, doctor, lawyer, you know. David was being really quiet, though, so the teacher asked him about his father. David said, my father's an exotic dancer in a gay cabaret and takes off all his clothes in front of other men. Sometimes, if the offer's really good, he'll go out to the alley with some guy and make love with him for money. Now, this obviously concerned the teacher a little bit. Later in the day, she took little David aside to ask him, is that really true about your father? David says, no, he works for the Obama administration, but I was too embarrassed to say that in front of the other kids. Hillary Clinton goes to a primary school to talk to the students about the world. After she's done with her speech, she says, okay, now you can ask some questions. One little boy put up his hand and Hillary said, okay, what's your name? My name is Kenneth. Hillary says, okay, Kenneth, what's your question? I have three questions. First, were you really broke when you left the White House? Second, what did you accomplish as Secretary of State? And third, what really happened at Benghazi? Just then, the bell rings for recess and all the kids run out of the room. After recess, Hillary comes back into the classroom and says, okay, where were we? Oh, right, question time. Who else has a question? Different little boy puts his hand up. And what's your name? My name's Larry. And what's your question, Larry? I have two questions. Why did the recess bell go off 20 minutes early? And what happened to Kenneth? There's a huge emergency somewhere in the country, and President Obama immediately gets an Air Force One and flies to the scene to see things firsthand. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He goes to a fundraiser. What would it take for President Obama to miss a fundraiser? A bigger fundraiser. The U.S. Postal Service has issued a recall of a stamp they created with a picture of Hillary Clinton on it to honor her achievements while serving as the first lady of our country. A problem was discovered when people started telling the Postal Service that the stamp was just not sticking to envelopes. A special Postal Service investigation team was formed 
and after several months and many millions of dollars spent, they made the following findings. First, they found that the stamp was manufactured properly. Second, there was nothing wrong with the adhesive. Finally, they concluded that people were just spitting on the wrong side of the stamp. I'm Dan Joseph. If you know of a good joke that I missed, leave it in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe by clicking on the red widget. For every widget click, I will donate a treat to my cat. Why <laughs> watch there be like six? How about that, folks? That was uh, that was funny. That had me that had me chuckling here with the microphone off, so y'all didn't get to hear my laugh. But there's plenty uh, going on out there that we can kind of poke fun at on this wonderful Monday morning. Um, I mean, there's some hard news out there too, and we'll get that in a little bit. But uh, another thing to kind of uh, kind of laugh about is uh, Eric Reed over at BuzzPo. He's always great with some Second Amendment level, you know, type stories. And uh, Eric, while well, Eric is kind of uh, wrist deep or knee deep in the uh, the Second Amendment fight, so to speak, because he is the president and founder of Gun Rights Across America (GRAA), and he writes over at BuzzPo as well, and uh, comes up with some great stuff that really gets into some of the uh, the nitty gritty there when it comes to the the Second Amendment fight and the gun control, gun sense, gun nonsense stuff coming out of certain groups, you know, like every town, every town against gun owners, uh, mothers demand amnesty, um, or mayors against uh, the Second Amendment and the, the rest of those groups, whatever the real names are, and I'm sure you all know them as well as I do, but of course I don't want to give them the credence of actually saying them. Anyway, back on Saturday, a uh, group, now there's a couple of different groups here in this small little speck of dirt down in the southern central portion of the United States, you know, this insignificant little spot of dust, this most insignificant state in the union. Of course, I'm talking about the ones responsible on a monthly basis of creating at least 50, well, creating at least 20% of the new jobs whenever the jobs report comes out comes out of this little speck of dust and of course I refer to this little speck of dust little spot of dirt called Texas anyway down here in Texas there are two major um, gun control or not gun not gun control but uh, Second Amendment advocate groups anti-gun control groups so to speak and they both advocate um, constitutional carry in other words they they want to see open carry of pistols being legalized in texas you know and one of the groups loves to walk around carrying uh various what the left likes to call assault rifles they're not assault rifles folks just because they have plastic stuff on the outside of them so you don't burn your hands when you're at the range does not make it an assault rifle anyway especially since especially since it's just a twenty two. Really, it's a well it's a point two two three, so it's very little bit larger than a twenty two, but for all intents and purposes, it's a twenty two. You know, I'm talking about the AR fifteen. An AR fifteen is not an assault rifle. An M sixteen with a burst selector on her on it that works, that is an assault rifle. Big difference. Anyway, one of the groups, of course, is uh, Open Carry Texas, who will walk around with their rifles, openly carrying them as a means of saying, hey, we're open carrying these because you ain't letting us open carry the thing that's a little bit less scary, i.e. a pistol. So they're doing what's legal because what's not legal is really, well, ludicrous and stupid and ridiculous. The other group, is come and take it Texas or come and take it CATI well CATI decided to do one of their little open carry walks and demonstration walks in uh, through downtown Austin which of course is the capital of this little speck of dirt called Texas so they weren't going and doing their open they're doing their little walk and demonstration parade they do one about one a month um, about the same weekend of each month so Every town's mothers demand 
anti-gun legislation to take away and destroy the Constitution, uh, MDA, headed by my nemesis, Shannon Watts, who still refuses to debate me, probably because she's, she's scared. Yep, that's it. She's scared. Either that or she just realizes that I'm going to berate her with facts, and she has none on her side. But anyway, the uh, members of MDA, local to Austin, decided to go into a counter-protest. And their counter-protest is they decided to open carry their gazangas, their breasts, their upper body woman parts, their nipples, their jellies on a plate. Well, if you see the pictures, they're more like melting jellies on a, uh, on a, on a teacup platform, what do we call those, the little saucers. They're, they're dripping and drooling and look like somebody left butter out in the middle of the Texas sun in the middle of August. <laughs> so, <laughs> they went out. Folks, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just looking at, at Eric Reed's story and thinking about this. It's just it's just funny. You have to go over to BuzzFo and read the story and see the pictures on there for yourself. That these, they, I can't describe them. You have, they have to be seen to be believed. But they decided to go and do their counter protest topless and without their bras and camisoles or whatever the heck you know women would normally wear on their upper body to uh, restrain their uh, their jigglies, their. Uh, they're, they're fun bags, um, love pillows. It, it, take whatever euphemism you want for them, their breasts. So they walked around and then walked around with signs. And uh, as Eric Reed points out, technically, a woman walking around topless in Austin is not illegal. Although, if you look at these pictures, they are graphic that's the only way to put it even with the censorship that eric reed did to make sure portions are covered by something usually a black box of some kind there's still well i'm just for a warning guys you guys need to see this to believe it but after you do you might want to go and get out the eye bleach and it may not even work, but yeah, they somehow they thought that walking around bearing their their upper body lady parts, they're showing off the ladies, so to speak, would somehow be a, a good counter protest to uh, the open carry of uh, of rifles in Texas. Problem. There are female members of Come and Take It, as well as female members of Open Carry Texas, and other uh, Second Amendment advocate groups. I mean, Dana Lash. You guys know Dana, right? Or at least know of her. I won't say you necessarily know her like you hang out and go to barbecues with her, because I sure as heck don't. But she's a huge Second Amendment um, advocate. And so is Katie Pavlik, who's a rather young lady in her early 20s still, maybe up to mid now. You know, from, she's from Arizona, you know, a state that has constitutional carry, meaning you, if you can legally own it, you can legally carry it. You know, not wherever there. I mean, there are some restrictions like schools and stuff like that. But in general, if you legally own it, you can carry it, either concealed or open in Arizona. Staying here to Texas, Dana Lash lives in Texas now, and she's a Second Amendment supporter. I'm not saying that Dana would go around showing off her ladies. She's a mom. She's not going to embarrass herself, the blaze her husband and her kids that way. I mean, I'm sure her. I'm sure Chris has seen them. I hope so. 
they're for his eyes. You know, they're married. But my point being, you have the female members or female 